So have you ever wanted to learn about the origins of the robots in disguise? Well, I have a movie for you. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's movie review of the new Transformers film, Transformers 1. This film is directed by Josh Cooley. Okay, so be aware, I'm just making this easy for the review audience so they don't get confused. I'm not going to be talking about the characters' names that they are originally called, which are, of course, Orion Pax and D16 and B127 and Alita and so on and so forth. I really want to focus on just calling them Optimus Prime and Megatron just to make it easy for everyone because, you know, once again, it's it's very deep cut. If you know from, like, the comics or the early animated stuff, that, that's kind of where this stuff leans on. But I just wanted to make you aware that I'm going to call them Optimus Prime and Megatron just to, be, just to make it easy for everyone. So there you go. So they didn't really want me to spoil anything on this movie um, which is very difficult to do on the simple fact that it's called Transformers 1 if you've seen the trailer you know it's a prequel that has Megatron and Optimus Prime who are good friends in this movie and it's basically the story that leads up to that to be fairly honest you know these two individuals they're working in a society that they can't transform they can't do much of anything and they're constantly being put down by their their person that's in charge of them well they they decide they're going to go into a race they get the uh, attention of their, like one of their favorite people called of course uh sentinel prime who's voiced by john ham and it basically is a movie that ends up being kind of a journey for the matrix of leadership and in the process we have people like alita who's played by scarlett johansson and of course keegan michael key who plays bumblebee who go to the surface level of Cybertron of Icon City and stuff like that to find the Matrix of Leadership and the Prime Sentinels and it basically is as you can tell from what I'm saying the formation of the Decepticons the formation of the Autobots and the struggle of a friendship that breaks because of some problems that happen in this movie and then of course you get all your other characters that start forming into mix whether it be you know RC or Starscream or you know Soundwave Shockwave all that good stuff so it's an origin story that's how I'll put it so this is a very interesting movie because we've never really, I mean, we've had bits and pieces, but we've never had a true full on origin story for the Transformers. Yes, you can look at like the video games that came out, like the war and so on, the war for Cybertron and stuff like that. You can look at Bumblebee, you can look at some of the Transformers Gen 1 series. The, it, it's never really been done like this. And on top of that, it's an animated film. So they're able to really focus on the Transformers, which is something we've truly wanted. They usually add in like human characters and stuff like that. But it was pretty smart to just go back to the origin story, how these people or how these robots became what they were, how they formed into the formations that they were. And so I was looking forward to this movie. I know a lot of people aren't high on like the animation style, which is perfectly fine. It almost leans into, if you remember that series reboot, it almost leans into that, but much more more advanced in a lot of respects but the early reviews or the early sayings of this film because it was screened at a film festival and then you know it started garnering a lot of screening and screening and stuff like that i saw this movie like three weeks ago as this review have been actually quite positive almost like uh, really positive to be fairly honest and so I, I i was looking forward to it I, mean, I really was i was like one of three people that actually enjoyed the trailer for what it's worth i think the second trailer gives away a little bit too much but it's also a movie that has Chris Hemsworth and Brian Tyree Henry who are having to fill in the voice work for, of course, Peter Collin and, of course, Frank Welker. And with being a movie that is um, heavily inspired by the Gen 1 Transformers, it's really interesting to see what Chris Hemsworth and uh, Brian Tyree Henry can do with these characters. So with that said, going into this movie, seeing it as early as I did, clearly they were knowing that we were going to be excited by this movie because they're putting out a lot of press for it. And for my honest opinion of this movie, I think this movie does a really nice job of not only giving us an interesting backstory to Optimus and Me Megatron and the Autobots and Decepticons. But it's a movie that actually goes deeper than I was expecting when it comes to class warfare. It comes to the class system. It comes to, it, you know, goes into deities and how we portray our deities and how we obsess over people. And it's also a movie about what happens when one character starts to feel betrayed and the other character doesn't feel like it's going on the right path. And it's really interesting. Like, I give a lot of credit to the writers of this movie and Josh Cooley, who animated this movie or directed this movie, for going a little bit deeper than what the Transformers mythology has ever 
ever gone into. And therefore, I really enjoyed this movie. It is very slow, like in the middle of the movie when they do go to the surface level of Icon and uh, Cybertron. But I think the movie really does a nice job. It does an interesting job of giving us depth to characters that we know, especially if you're a huge Transformers fan, that you know about their lore. You know one character is called Ryan Pax and one character is called D16. And they call each other that in this movie. But this movie also has a lot of heart. Like this friendship, similar to like Magneto and Professor X, Charles Xavier, there is a level of sadness and a level of kind of melancholy that you go into realizing that these two are like really good friends and at some point they have to separate on ideologies and i don't think i've ever seen a movie that has had this level of you know uh care and proficiency when it comes to that and therefore i was really kind of taken back by how enjoyable this movie was you know it's not perfect like i said it does kind of beat around the bush with like you know leading the tropes that you've seen a billion times before you know bad guy's gonna bad guy good guy's gonna good guy but i think there's just enough there that if you're a huge transformers fan i think you'll really enjoy this movie and i i certainly did i think it's a, a well acted well animated very thought-provoking film when it comes to that and it also has some great action in it too so i give a lot of credit for that too and i like the look of icon city i like the look of these characters i'm glad they kind of stuck with the gen one characters and all their you know all their glory and you know this isn't michael bay even though he's like an executive producer but this isn't michael bay's transformers this is clearly inspired by the people that love Gen generation one the 1980s franchise i think it's a movie that really you know it's animated uh, with help from industrial light magic and you can tell i mean it just it really is a work of art and there's not anything like that when it comes to the transformers this is a wholly entirely different take a different look when it comes to the animation style and i like the fact that these two individuals especially prime and megatron are are individuals that don't realize that things are happening to them and when they finally have the things that we know and love from them it actually plays out pretty fun and dramatically and entertaining you know when megatron gets his gun and when you know optimus is you know able to turn into a truck or some type of truck and you know they play with that and they have a little bit of fun with that when they're trying to learn how to do that kind of stuff and i don't know i just i think in the end you know kind of you know kind of wrap it up i think it's a movie that one of the better transformers movies i've seen in quite a while i mean this is right up there with you know the original series this is right up there with me michael bay's transformers one depending on how you feel about it it's definitely probably the best thing since bumblebee to be fairly honest because i wasn't a huge fan of rise of the beast but i think josh cooley hit on something in, in his writer eric pearson and andrew barrier and gabriel ferrari i think you know they hit on something that is something that we've wanted which is to see robots do robot things not have to worry about the humans and therefore i think you know transformers one is a, a pretty pretty good film i think it has a lot of fun and entertainment value and i think it's good it might be a little dark and a little, little scary for kids but i think if you're a huge transformers fan or if they're old enough you know in the five to ten range or whatever and they're a huge transformers fan i think this is a perfectly great film a perfectly enjoyable film you know, has a, a pretty good score. It's animated very well. It has the characters you know and love and actually sets up an origin story that you may know already, but I think it does a really, really nice job for it. So overall, I recommend Transformers 1. It's not perfect. Once again, it get, does get a little stale in the middle, but I think if you, I think, I think if you honestly like Transformers, I think you'll like this movie like I did. So there you go. Anyways, with that said, that is going to be my take on Transformers 1. Uh, we'll be in theaters very, very soon, uh, but there you go. So thank you so much for watching. Comments below. What is your favorite Transformers character? What is your favorite Transformers movie, show, you know, Beast Wars, Transformers Gen 1, all that good stuff. So let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like what you see in this video, awesome. Hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell. Top of the phone is coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out, guys.